Hello everyone! Hi, how are you? This is Kay. So, today is the 4th of July on Tuesday. So, how are you everyone? And welcome back to another live stream on my YouTube. So, I hope you had a great, great weekend. So, uh, seems like the markets are consolidating yesterday and today. And today is a US holiday, so it looks like the markets are quiet. And also, we have lots of big news this week, since this is the first week of the month. So, uh, yeah, today I think I will just screen charts and also uh, create some possible scenarios for this week and also in the month of July. And uh, yeah, see what's happening in the markets after they open on Monday. So, good to see you everyone. Thank you very much for joining. Okay, let's see. Master of, Gayan, Riyad, Basam, good to see everyone. Alright, Reza, Huang, BB Gaming, and John, good to see you. Alright, LW, Mamohan, Federico, and Arvid, good to see you. Porin, Pam, Okay, Appalachian, good to see you too. Alright. Sopin An, Saidiman, and Careful. Thank you very much for joining everyone. Great to see you. Alright, so now let me switch screen to trading view and see what's happening among the markets. So today, well this week, I have been watching JPI pairs to see if they break the resistances, but looks like they are still consolidating. So let me first review JPY pairs. Um, so first from top, Euro JPY. Like I mentioned on the weekly forecast, Euro JPY is bullish to me. The prices are above the Tenkan Sen, this is the daily time frame. And they are above the Tenkan Sen, so that means buyers are still dominant. Buyers are winning the trades and sellers, so um, the market may break that resistance anytime. We have um, thick and big Kumo up, so that's uptrend in the long term. Tenkan Sen is also up, so unless the market breaks Tenkan Sen, that's bullish. But if it breaks Tenkan Sen, then that will be the true range or true consolidation based on Ichimoku. So today is bearish, but um, so far it, it has been ranging to me near the resistance. So whenever it breaks, I look for a buying opportunities. So I'm waiting for the breakout of 157.96 and then the target will be 160, the next run number. And we can expect the pips of about 190 pips to trade once it breaks. So still waiting for the breakout on Euro JPY. So and also USD JPY. Um, here's another daily time frame, similar, very similar to Euro JPY. Tenkan Sen itself is up, and prices are above the Tenkan Sen. So unless it breaks Tenkan Sen, it's bullish. And once it breaks, the target will be 148.88. So we can expect about uh, 380 pips to the target. So still waiting for the breakout also on USDJPY. And Pound JPY is also looking good. Uh, Pound JPY is also consolidating, but uh, this one may become a new end wave, bullish. And I can see buyers are dominant for the last three days, Friday and yesterday Monday. And today Tuesday, so far it's been doji, but uh, seems like pound JPY is the strongest bullish among the other JPY pairs. And also if you quickly check the currency strings chart, hold on, let me put it up. So here is uh, today's strings among the currencies. 
And uh, so right now, let me just select GBP and JPY. And they are exactly at the same level. So that means this is really range. So I'm still waiting for the break. I'm still waiting for the next move to happen. Within today, the strongest is the New Zealand and the weakest is Euro. And just for the last 30 minutes, CAD is bearish. So um, we are in the very tricky market. But coming back to pound JPY, to me, this is still bullish. So still also waiting for the breakout to happen on this one. And then also another JPY is um, AUD JPY. So AUD JPY is also bullish because the price is above the Tenkan Sen. And I'm waiting for the next end wave. Well, actually, I'm expecting the next end wave to happen on this one. Uh, now it's just consolidating, but uh, this is what I called a counter trend line breakout. Do you ever use the counter trend line breakout strategy? Um, counter trend line breakout is effective whenever you see the potential new end waves, when it's bullish or bearish. So this is a potential new end wave because the price is above the Tenkan Sen and also Chikou span above candles. So that means buyers are dominant from short to mid to long term. In this condition, you can draw the trend, the counter trend line. So the regular trend line will look like this. This is the regular trend line, the yellow line, like this. But counter trend line is where you put the line uh, on this uh, pushback. So let me delete the regular, regular trend line. And this is counter trend line. And the market just broke a counter trend line bullish. So when this happens, I expect the market moves up this way. So um, based on the price action also, there was an inside bar breakout at the pushback. Inside bar means this uh, blue bearish high and low has included two future candles and yesterday it broke exactly this white bullish candlestick close above the blue resistance. So this is the breakout of the inside bar. And when I see this, this is also a pushback confirmation. So based on these multiple findings, to me, this is still bullish. And that's why I'm still waiting for an opportunity to buy. You can actually buy now and put the stop loss below the pushback. That's also the strategy to follow. So this will be the stop loss you buy and expect the market reaches at least to the resistances or the swing high in this area. And once it breaks, you can also expect more pips because that will be a new end wave. So whenever you see pushback, uh, not only by Ichimoku, but also price action uh, does mean a lot. And I do also check charts by price actions to decide my trade decision, trade uh, decisions. As Goichi Hosoda also says, um, you know, the creator of Ichimoku says, we have to trade also based on the candlesticks. You can't really trade only by Ichimoku, is what uh, he says in his original books. And that's also the reason why I also uh, study the price actions. Yeah. Oh, I see one comment about that actually here. Reza says, um, regarding price action and candlestick analysis, I found a book by Muneshima Homma, but I didn't find anything by Sakata Goho. Also, there are other books in this field, which one do you recommend? Um, 
I have to search also because I have been reading the price action books in Japanese. Uh, to be honest, I never read any books in English about the price actions or the candlesticks. So I have to look into it. Or uh, please wait for my videos about uh, Homa Muneshima's original uh, candlestick patterns and also Sakata Goho. Yeah, Sakata Goho is my favorite uh, price action. So let me quickly introduce that right now since we talk about that. I think that's really important. Maybe you can Google search Sakata Goho like this in uh, internet. Oh, I can see that there's a looks like it's called Sakata 5. Let me look into this one. Sakata 5, it says, um, let's see, this is, so Sakata Goho, I mean, Go means 5 in Japanese. So Sakata's 5 candlestick method is basically what Sakata Goho means. But um, yeah, so okay. So gaps pattern and uh, yeah, red, uh, red candlestick uh, bearish and bullish. So that's called um, Sanpei. Yeah, so that's that's correct. Um, yeah, three rivers, Sansen, right? Sansen. This is pattern, reverse pattern. I do use that also. And uh, let's see. Sanzan, yes, Sanzan is also what I use. Sanzan, uh, Sanzan is like, a, um, yeah, like a triple top or like a triple bottom. And uh, Sampo is also the case. Also on top of that, there. This is called inside. This is exactly what I talked about inside. Um, looks like in this case, inside is only introduced when it's bullish and inside, and that's the trend continuation signal. But inside can also mean the trend reverse. The market goes down, and you find inside, and then it goes up. And especially when it's a bigger picture, uh, like this, then this is also a confirmation of the new N wave. And that's exactly what we found on AUDJPY today. This was a counter trend line, then breakout. So we expect the new N wave to happen like this way. So um, yeah, so I will look for some uh, good uh, website or some books about uh, candlesticks. But uh, yeah. You can maybe uh, find some articles by Sakata Goho Google search or Sakata 5 maybe. Um, yeah, so this is uh, how we how you can uh, write in Japanese Sakata Goho. But anyways, I think I will talk about that on separate video. Um, but yeah, here again, this is an inside and this is the breakout. So this is uh, uptrend confirmation. And again, with Ichimoku, Ichimoku also shows that this is bullish. Buyers are dominant because of the Chikou span and the price location. So I say, I say that this is bullish. So yeah, I'm still waiting for the opportunity to buy on AUDJPY. So that's bullish also. And then um, CADJPY is uh, now consolidating, but again, single span A is up, and the prices are above the Tenkan Sen, so it's about to break bullish anytime. Chikou span has been above the candles too, and there's a good distance between Chikou span and the candles, so this is bullish also. Uh, and finally, Swiss franc JPY, I think to me is also bullish. Again, the same thing. Kumo is up, Tenkan Sen is up, Chikou span above candles. 
Kijun Sen is flat, so that means it's been consolidating. But uh, yeah, we just have to wait for the next breakout in this case. So yesterday and today, the markets are consolidating, and other markets also, uh, non-JPI pairs also range. So this is when I still be patient and uh, not trace. And again, especially today is the US holiday. So um, yeah, I think the market most likely will be quiet. So I think I will just come back tomorrow for my chartings. So today, this is the news website. But today, there will be no big news. And tomorrow, um, there is a FOMC minutes. And Thursday, we have lots of big news. Australia and Euro retail sales, this is very big. And ADP, employment change, this one is also very big. And ISM services PMI in the US. So we may see some next move tomorrow, or sorry, the day after, on Thursday. Um, yeah, or even the break happens within today or tomorrow, I trade and hopefully I set what I call break even line before the news happens so that I don't lose. In terms of the break even line, you can Google search, I mean YouTube, ForexK and break even strategy and you can find some videos about that. So that's also part of the risk management. I'm here to help you become a non-losing trader. So before you be profitable, you should become first non-losing trader. Because if you have become non-losing trader, then that means you are good at the risk management. And then you start to make profits gradually. So anyways, um, so these are all range. Um, let me also check um, gold, XAUUSD. I have been looking for the selling opportunity on gold. I was going to sell, but uh, looks like today it's bullish um, and it looks like it's retracing uh, to the previous support or the Kijun Sen. So this is not the best timing to sell. If the market will be resisted by the previous supports, then start to go down, I think that will be a great opportunity to expect the new reversing wave down. But now it's, it's uh, retracing, so I'm not gonna trade. Yeah, I don't sell, I don't sell whenever it's retracing because this is where the short-term buyers and long-term sellers fight here. So that means the market becomes very choppy. So today seems to be bullish bar, but tomorrow could be bearish bar. And the day after could be bullish bar, and the market will be very tricky. And we can expect big profits on, in this case. And that's why instead of scalping or Intraday trade, I don't, I don't uh, trade. I prefer to uh, trade some other trending markets if there are. So that's uh, gold. And WTI is, has been consolidating, so there's no movements on this one. All right, so now let me move on to some index. Is anyone trading index here? Um, like I mentioned before, um, S&P, sorry, um, Nasdaq first. Nasdaq is bullish still. And it's about to break the resistance. 15,267. Uh, about to break. And this is also called the counter trend line. And the price is above the Tenkan Sen. Chikou span above candle, so this is bullish. So it may break that resistance high. Yeah, so PPE, that's my comment about um, 
Nasdaq. But since Kijun Sen is flat, um, the market may consolidate for a while. Whenever you see Kijun Sen flat, and also single span A and single span B are also flat. So that means the buyers and sellers are 50 50. Um, so to get to it more deeply, on in terms of uh, what I mean by that, um, I am actually seeing the market as the trend direction and momentum. So in terms of momentum, it's bullish. Again, because the price location is above Tenkan Sen and the Chikou span above candles. So that means in terms of momentum, buyers are winning the trades. So it's bullish. Buyers may come in, continue to come into the markets, and it may break the resistance. But uh, in terms of the um, the direction, this is flat. Direction is now flat, and direction is captured by single span A, single span B, and Kijun Sen, and also Tenkan Sen angles. When you see all these four are flat, that means direction is flat or range and even if buyers are winning the trades the ratio between buy buyers and sellers are 50 50 so that's what we call equilibrium equilibrium is uh now 50 50 so that means the market may be trace and uh, what's more, Tenkan Sen shows the short term, and Kijun Sen shows the mid term, and the single span B shows the long term. So, whenever, let's say first, short term is flat, the angle of the short term is flat, and that means um, this is the mean of the market for the short term traders. And so that means from the short term perspective, this is overbought. Buyers are too much among the short term traders. And that's why I say the market may retrace to the Tenkan Sen. And the same is true uh, in terms of the mid term and also long term. They are all flat. So that means uh, in terms of the direction is flat to uh, to make it short. So, anyways, um, I don't. Th so that means I don't think the market will break the resistance anytime soon. I mean, the, some news may make the market break, but if there is, let's say, if there are no big news, let's say today is not the first week of the month. Let's say like second or third week of the month. And then usually within this week, the market consolidates and uh, next week it breaks, usually the case. But uh, so that's why um, this is how you read the market by Ichimoku. But, um, you know, um, to make the long, long story short, anyways, we have to wait for the breakout is what I want to say. You know, don't think too much, just wait for the breakout and buy in this partic particular case. But if Kumo, single span B is up, single span A up, Kijun Sen up, then direction is bullish. So that's when I expect the market breaks the resistance. So yeah, let's see. So to me, this is bullish, but it may consolidate for a while. So that means even if you buy now, the market may be traced to Tenkan Sen and you may lose a little bit. So that means this is today maybe not the perfect timing to buy yet. Yeah, I hope that makes sense to everyone. That's a bit deeper analysis by Ichimoku, five lines. But uh, yeah, that's what I see here. 
And also, um, S&P 500, let me also check. So S&P has broke the resistance. So now it's bullish. So to me, S&P 500 is the strongest bullishness. And then Nasdaq follows and Dow Jones is now ranging. This is still below the resistance and Kumo is completely flat. So it's not really bullish to me. Yeah, we will see. Okay, so now let me check some comments. Again, thank you very much for joining everyone today. This is uh, 4th of July. It's a US holiday. So we're having some quiet market. Let me come back to Forex. Okay. LW says, um, in your strategy is a previous resistance becoming a support itself and entry confirmation also. Yes, it is. It is. So that's called, uh, that's what I call reversal, reversal signal. So let me look for that example. That's also uh, the price action pattern one of the powerful price actions. So I think I found that example, which is here. So Euro Pound um, is having the reversal. The previous supports became the resistance. So this is exactly what you see here. So in this case, the market is consolidating, then it went down, broke the support, and then came back to the previous supports, then resisted, so we expect the next bearish in the wave. So to me, Euro Pound is now bearish. Yeah, Kumo has been bearish also. Kijun Sen is pointing down Chikou Span below candles. So Euro Pound is, I think, to me, bearish. Sellers are dominant, and direction is down. So. I do expect the market breaks the support 0 0.8518. So yeah, that's how you can identify the previous supports became resistance now. And you can actually use this strategy on any time frames. I do use that strategy in high time frames like this, daily or weekly. And also when I find this confirmation on a five minute time frame, I also use that uh, to give me some extra confirmations for my entries. So yeah, I usually execute my trades based on the five minute confirmations. So I do check charts in high time frames and draw lines and check Ichimoku and see exactly what's happening in the bigger picture and then break it down to the lower time frames and look for the entry timings so i i be precise on these entries for example on this euro pound uh, if you check the five minute time frame let's see m5 is now consolidating so to me this is not a good timing to trade Oh, M5 also shows the same pattern, um, reversal. The previous supports became resistance. So the market may go down in this case, may go down continuously this way. Now it's ranging, but then this may be resisted and goes down. To me, this is bearish because daily is bullish. I follow the major direction and get exact entry timings on M5 like this. So that my stop loss becomes smaller, uh, my pips stop loss becomes smaller, and I risk 2% to stop loss. So that means if my stop loss becomes smaller, then I can go with a bigger lot size. I calculate every time when I enter trace the risk to stop loss and decide how much lot size I go for. So yeah, now looks like it's at the resistance. So let's monitor together and see 
if the price will be resisted here or not. If it breaks, usually, if it breaks like this, then I, I don't trade. So let's wait for the next 3 minutes and see how it closes. So here, it's breaking the resistance, but uh, don't, don't, uh, don't uh, jump in. I mean, now there's a long week. So unless the candlestick closes, we never know if this becomes the break or not. And so we have to be patient and wait for the close of the candlestick and decide whether to trade or not. So yeah, let's see if the pattern will be visible in this case. In the meantime, let me check some other comments. Okay, good to see you. Thank you very much for joining. Okay. Okay, let me see. Kairi trading. Yeah, Kairi trading is one of the strategies of Ichimoku. You can actually take buy or sell depending on how far the prices are from the Kijun Sen. That's called Kairi trading. I talk deeply about that in my Ichimoku community. Yeah, but that's also powerful, powerful uh, strategy. So now the price is, uh, the candlestick is now becoming a pin bar. So this particular candlestick is called pin bar. Pin bar is where the very tiny body and the long wick pointing up. And when you see this, this is a reversal pattern. But again, we have to wait for the candlestick close. It takes another one minute to close. If it closes, it may become a bullish bar or it may become a pin bar. So we have to be patient to wait for what kind of patterns it closes and then decide what to do next. So this is how I become precise on my entries. Yeah, so let's see. How many indicators uh, do you use? I use um, two indicators in low time frames. This is five minute, where I usually use for my entries. And uh, I do use the Bollinger Bands and Stochastic to trade. Okay, and after the candlestick closed, then I wait for one extra confirmation most likely. Okay, so it looks like it's closing with a pin bar now. Three, two minutes, uh, two seconds. It just closed and it closed with the pin bar, right? So this is the reversal pattern clearly. And this pin bar adds more confirmation for its bearishness. Again, daily is down. So this pair could be downtrend in the long term. So now I wait for the next candlestick. Now this is bearish. So if it closes below the pin bar support, then that could be a good entry chance. So you know you have you see pin bars everywhere like a uh, pin bar for example here or pin bar for example here or um, here. So if you see pin bar in if you only understand pin bar as reverse patterns, then you don't know which one to use. Whether if this is the trust one or here also as a pin bar, if this is trustable or this one, you never know, right? Um, every time you trade with a pin bar, sometimes it works, but sometimes it doesn't. And that's because you don't really understand the high time frame situations. These pin bar breakouts or any kind of uh, breakout strategies will work to uh, along with the major direction. 
So in this case, this is bearish. The, the market has been bearish from Ichimoku in high time frames. So that means you only trust downtrend signals and all the bullish signals will be fake. This is very, very important to remember. So let's say the market has been bearish. You know Ichimoku shows downtrend, so it has been bearish. Every time when you when you take the pin bar breakout bullish, for example this, this will be become a fake. And also um, here pin bar break happens bullish but it becomes fake. And um, here also pin bar break bullish becomes fake also. So whenever you see downtrend, never go against it on any signals you use. You only look for the setting signals and they likely become true. Even indicators. I use stochastic and whenever it's downtrend from Ichimoku, when I see downtrend by Ichimoku, then I never trade buy, I never take gold crosses to buy. So for example, here gold cross happens and um, this becomes fake. And here also gold cross happens, but this all one this one also becomes fake. And also here two gold cross happening. But since it's downtrend, this can become a fake. You see? So that's why I don't take these gold crosses uh, to buy. But if when I used to only look at the five minute, I used to buy gold buy gold cross and sell debt crosses. But I would never knew why these gold crosses becoming fake. But now I know because I capture the trend directions by high time frames. In contrast, all the dead crosses can be true. So for example, here there was a clear dead cross. If you took sell, then you have been making profits. And uh, another dead cross happened here. Technically this was a dead cross. And this happened below 20. And 20 is considered to be oversold, but I do take it because when it's a strong downtrend in high time frames, there will be dead crosses below 20, but they still work. So here, if you sell, you put the stop loss above the high, then you make profits too. And here's another dead cross below 20, and this will be almost like break even now. But like this, whenever you see dead crosses when it's bearish, they all work. So usually people trade against or without knowing high time frame situations and take signals buy and sell by the crosses and they also fail. So that's why I am a trend follower and I do capture trends by Ichimoku Kinkohyo. I used to use moving averages, but uh, I switch strategy to uh, Ichimoku because Ichimoku Kinkohyo has more information, much more information about the markets, and they go really well with candlesticks. So when I see downtrend, that's how I enter trades by M5. Um, so that's my strategy. So I do use multiple time frames from analysis and take trades. So while talking, looks like um, now the price is consolidating. So I said after you see pin bar, we have to wait for the breakout. But the breakout didn't happen. But instead, the next candlestick became bullish. So that means this pin bar was a fake. So whenever you see pin bar, you have to wait for the next candlestick to close below. Then it becomes more trustable. Of course, this can be fake, the market may be bullish, but in terms of the probability, whenever you see the breakout, 
then there's a more chance that the market goes down after this by following the major downtrend. So like, uh, for example, let's see uh, this one. So here there was a pin bar. Well, actually there were two pin bars. And then this blue bearish candlestick broke these are two pin bars. And this was the confirmation that the sellers became dominant over buyers. So from this um, candlestick perspective, down, new downtrend started here on M5. So you can follow downtrend. Yeah, so that's how I look for what I call entry edge. So yeah, now it's consolidating, so this is no more good entry opportunity. But again, still, the market has been resisted by the previous supports, so the market may be bearish still. And now, I see that this is ascending P wave. Ascending P wave is another pattern of the candlesticks. So higher highs and the resistances at the same level. So this is ascending P wave. Ascending P wave is a bullish confirmation usually from textbook. But again, this is bearish in high time frame. So if the market breaks ascending P wave bearish, that can be a new downtrend. So that's also what I wait for. But if he breaks bullish, then that's already against the major direction and broke the resistances. So then I stay away. I don't trade because most likely the market becomes choppy and there will be a fake breakout or Y wave and the market becomes very tricky. So the only timing I would sell is when the ascending P wave breaks bearish. So that's what I wait for in terms of this uh, price actions. So sometimes when I see this pattern, I put alert on the, the trend line itself. I add alert on trend line. And when it breaks, um, I come back and uh, yeah, see if I can trade. So you can, I think the good thing about TradingView is that you can actually put alerts on these lines themselves, not only the price levels. You can even um, put alerts on Ichimoku lines. Each of Ichimoku lines, you can also put these alerts. Whenever you see Kumo up or down, Kijunsen up or down, you can put alerts on these ones. Before I start YouTube, I didn't use uh, TradingView. I was only using MT5 to trade and also analyze for my analysis. But after I started my my YouTube and someone told me about the TradingView about uh, three years ago, and I started to use it. And I like it very much. Yeah. So, yeah, so that's my view. So that's about, um, uh, about the entry confirmations. So again, if you check the daily time frame, it's bearish. The market, Akumo has been bearish. Kijun Sen is down. And Chikou Span below candles. Sellers are dominant. So, and also in the daily time frame, also there was a reverse pattern. Previous supports became resistance. So I'm expecting the new downtrend, new reverse end wave to happen. And that's why I look for the selling opportunities. Even before the market breaks the support, this is when I look for the selling opportunity because to the support, there is um, still uh, 45 pips or, pips or so. So before, when I, let's say when I enter trade right now, 
then before the market reaches the support, I move the stop losses below my positions, and that's what I call break even, break even lines. I move physically move the stop losses below my positions, so that whenever things happen and the market goes up, I don't lose anything. If I keep my stop losses above my positions, then if the news or any any uh, events happens, then um, the market just goes up and. Uh, when I'm away from the charts, it may hit the stop loss and I lose. So before the break happens, I for sure move the stop losses to what I call break even, and then see if it breaks. If it doesn't, then I exit my trade with some profits. But if it does, if it breaks, then I follow the new downtrend. And that's when I usually find uh, the big trends. So I like to trade before the break happens, like in this case, so that once the break really happens, I can expect very nice pips. Um, otherwise, I simply wait for the breakout. Let's say if the candlestick is here, almost the breakout, for example, then I prefer to wait for the breakout because the pips will be only 10 pips and even even before the market touches the support sometimes it reverses so that will be a bit risky so in that case i wait for the breakout to sell but in this case again there is still 45 people so to the support so i sell and wait for the break even uh, timing so this is also part of the risk management. I do move the stop losses manually and make sure that I don't lose. Not only losing big, but I don't lose. That's why I say again, help you become a non-losing trader. So non-losing mindset is really important before you aim for big profits. That's my philosophy of my trace. Okay, so, but yeah, it looks like the market's quiet uh, since uh, US holiday, and we have no big news today, so I don't think I will trade it today. But that was a bit of a recap in terms of how I see charts in high time frames and get the exact entries in low time frames. Okay, so let me check some comments. Again, thank you very much for joining everyone. Great to see you. Great to see you. Oh, in terms of the June performance, I will share it uh, in this Saturday. So please come back to my live stream. Yes, you will see. Okay, Reza, you're welcome. Okay. Is this Sakatsu is a BNF trader? No, I'm not. I am K. So I did you I did create the few videos about BNF and um, still the conversation between CIS and BNF is still on my bucket list. So yeah, please look forward to it. There is a conversation on the internet between BNF and CIS. And I think you can also uh, find a big lesson from their conversations. Okay. Um, MTTube says, uh, Kaysan, do you select the hours to trade? If yes, which hours of the day? Um, I don't. I don't. Uh, simply, I check charts three times to five times per day. And whenever I find opportunities, even in Asian session, I do take trades. The volatility might be less. So I may have to monitor and 
uh, wait a bit longer than UK or New York sessions to see if it can make profits. But if there is a good trend, especially JPY pairs and AUD pairs uh, within the Asian session, I do take trades. Maybe not the Euro USD or Euro Pound. Some European currencies may be quiet, so maybe not in Asian session. Okay. Oh, Manish, thank you very much for your comment. Your everyday life has a new inspiration for me. That's great to hear. If we buy New Zealand JPY now on 5 minute base, where to put the stop loss as daily and 1 hour trending? Uh, you put the stop losses based on the waves on M5. So if you find the previous low, then that's when you can put the stop loss. Yes, thank you very much for joining everyone. So if you enjoyed today's live stream so far, please press the like button before you leave, that would be great for me to keep going. The Bollinger Bands, uh, Bollinger Bands and Stochastic setup. Um, yeah, so Bollinger Bands, I do use two, two bands. So you see here two Bollinger Band indicators. And this is 20 SMA. Uh, the red dotted line are, is um, 20 SMA. And I use deviations 1 and 2. So that's my uh, Bollinger Band setting. And for stochastic, I use uh, percent K30, percent D10, and throwing 10. So that's my stochastic setting. Yeah, simply I use stochastic because I personally like it. I'm used to it. I used to use RSI and MACD, but uh, for some reason, for me, uh, stochastic fits me the fits me better, and that's why. I simply use it. So, yeah, I think uh, this is, oh, looks like the market's breaking the resistance now. So, in this case, I don't really monitor anymore. I think I come back a few hours later, maybe two hours, three hours later, and see if the market goes down. But I think the market will be range after this. <clears throat> okay. Okay. So, uh, Fibonacci with Ichimoku. Um, yeah, yeah. I think Fibonacci with Ichimoku works really well. Sometimes, like uh, Fibonacci, uh, fifty percent is uh, almost to the Kijun Sen. So, yeah, I think they do go along, I think. Okay, so, um, oh, Kiwi pairs I don't trade because um, um, I backtested my strategy among all these pairs, and um, uh, I found my performance is lower on New Zealand pairs, and that's why I don't trade trades. But that was long ago, and now I see New Zealand pairs are trending, especially this year. So I'm thinking to backtest on these pairs this year from January. And if I find my performance is good, then I think I may include. Yeah, so I select the pairs to trade uh, whenever I see good performance with my strategy. If not, then I don't take trace. Okay. Oh, skipping your comments, I'm sorry. There are so many comments to cover, so yeah, I'm sorry about that. 
yeah, gold is now range. I'm, I'm looking for the selling opportunity, but gold is now retracing its bullish today. So I'm still waiting for a downtrend. Okay. Okay, so I think I finished a live. It's been about almost one hour. So I think I will end the live. But um, yeah, I'm sorry I couldn't cover all the questions and comments because I get so many. But uh, I hope you liked today's live stream. And I wish you come back to the next one and uh, ask me more questions. So again, uh, this week is the first week of the month. And every month, first week, we have lots of big news. So before you take trades, make sure that you check news. And if the news coming up soon, then don't trade. Because the news can violate any kind of technical confirmations. Okay, so uh, yeah, again, thank you very much. I hope you have a great day, great week. And until I see you next time, please stay healthy, stay safe, stay gold. Bye from everyone. Matane, thank you very much.